Hello! In this video, I will read the third and the final part of T. I'm looking forward to seeing how this all plays out for Alice and her writer, Chris. Here we go. Alice spoke to Monsieur Dupont, who owned Chris's flat. She found him very helpful. He said the flat was cheap because nobody ever stayed in it very long, and any money from the flat was better than none. What's wrong with the place? she asked. Nothing, said Dupont. It's just that people don't want to stay in a place where a man has killed himself. Killed himself? Yes, it was quite a few years ago, in the 1960s. Dupont told her. A young Japanese painter wanted people in Europe to take his work seriously. He was fed up with people seeing him as Japanese first and a painter second. He had a strange way of showing it. He invited a lot of peop important people to the flat for a cup of tea and to see his work. Then he cut his stomach open with a knife. It is an old Japanese way of saying you really don't like how things are going. I think they call it seppuku. Most unfortunate. Did people talk about what he did? No, not really. A few words in the newspaper, that's all. Monsieur Dupont looked sad. He was just seen as a mad young man who was best forgotten. There were plenty of mad people around then, as now. Things never change. So, you think he was mad? Who knows? I can understand what he meant, said Dupont. After all, he may have used old ways of working, but... He did have new things to say, but it was Paris in the 60s. People didn't want old ways of doing things. They wanted change. Can we have old ways and change? He thought so. And so he used traditional seppuku to bring change? Alice added. Only it didn't. It just brought about his own death. So where is his work now? The young man owed me money, so I took his work after his death. I own most of it now, said Dupont, except for the ones your writer friend bought. He chose the best pieces too. Chris Horton bought them from you? Didn't you know? I showed him some pieces shortly after he moved in. I didn't tell him about the young man killing himself, though. No need for that. Oh yes, it wasn't long before he wanted to buy them. He loved all the pieces, but you could see. He thought there was something special about the sword. The sword? Yes, and a large knife. They were very old, probably been in the artist family for many years. They are still very sharp, too. Our young painter used the same knife to kill himself, but I didn't say that, of course. Your Monsieur Houghton paid a lot of money for them, though they were worth every euro, of course. Of course, said Alice. And you have the rest of the artist's work? What did you say his name was? Didn't I tell you his name? Dupont asked. Yes, I have about twenty pieces of work left. He just called himself Zen. Not his real name, but that's all he would answer to. No family either. All died in the war. Just him left. Now he's gone too. 
Alice hoped that was true, but didn't say so. Tell me, Monsieur, when did Zen kill himself? On October 1966. He was only 26 when he died. I still think of him on that day every year. In fact, that's only two weeks from now. Ha! <laughs> oh, time flies. Alice returned home the next day. Her other writers kept her busy and pushed her worries about Chris to the back of her mind. A week passed, and she received an invitation from Chris. It was printed on a card with a Japanese picture on it. The invitation was not because he had completed his book as she had hoped. It was for a cup of tea and a look at his Japanese paintings. It was going to be on October, 7th of October, at his flat. The invitation ended, Chris Zen Horton. Alice soon found out that many television and newspaper reporters had been invited too. Quite a crowd. People were interested in this English writer, who seemed to have suddenly fallen in love with all things Japanese. It was a good story. Newspapers loved this kind of thing. Alice was sure they would be just like the crowd who had seen Zen at his tea party all those years ago. That was what worried Alice. She remembered how strange Chris had been when she last saw him. It wasn't like him, but it was like the angry young man who called himself Zen. It was almost as if Zen was making his anger known again through Chris. Had Zen got into Chris's head? Could such things really happen? Alice was not the kind of woman to believe in ghosts. However, she did believe it was better to be safe than sorry. She thought about Zen and the reasons for his seppuku. Knowing why he had killed himself could help explain the strange way Chris was acting. Chris, though he would never say so, had always had a soft centre. Perhaps soft enough for an angry ghost to get inside? But was there anything she could do about it? Maybe there was. The next few days were full of telephone calls, emails and meetings. Alice had never been so busy before in her life. She did everything she could to get some other important people to come to Chris's Japanese tea party. People who knew a lot more about painting than newspaper reporters. He was very tiring, but at last everything was ready, she hoped. Chris's flat was not large, but it did have one big room. All of Chris's Japanese things were there, and the room was full of people. Monsieur Dupont and Alice were talking together. Everybody was drinking Japanese tea. The sound of a small bell filled the room. Chris was going to speak and stood at the head of the room by a table where his samurai sword and knife rested. Ladies and gentlemen, he began, and his voice seemed to have changed from its normal Yorkshire accent to something else that was hard and angry. I have asked you all here to see the beauty of traditional Japanese painting. This art still has much to say about freedom and change, though I know you think differently. Well, I'm going to show you, in a traditional Japanese way, just how strongly I disagree. Chris reached for the large knife. He held it with both hands close to his stomach. 
the room went cold. Alice was terribly afraid. It was the knife. It was the same knife that Zen had used to kill himself all those years ago. Was the ghost of Zen going to make Chris do seppuku? One moment, Monsieur Hotan. A well-dressed man with very short hair and a long moustache stepped in front of Chris. Everybody knew the speaker. It was Rousseau, the famous Parisian writer. Chris still had the knife in his hand, but he stopped and listened. I am not here to disagree with you. This work may be traditional, said Rousseau, but it is more exciting and says more than anything else I have seen for years. Monsieur Zen uses tradition to free his painting from the mistakes of the past and shows us the future. This new work we see here today shows us the truth about Monsieur Zen. He was a great man, and I think we should show his work here in Paris. Chris Zen Horton at first looked lost, then gave a wide smile. The knife dropped from his hands onto the floor. Everybody in the room smiled. I don't know what happened to me. Chris was sitting next to Alice drinking hot black coffee. I couldn't help it. One moment I was so angry I wanted to kill myself. Then that Russo man said how much he loves Zen's work. All at once I felt happy and I just wanted to sleep. It was as if a great weight had fallen from me. I don't know if this Zen person had anything to do with it. Maybe, said Alice. I thought you, or rather Zen, might try something stupid with that knife. Zen was so angry that his work was not understood. I asked Rousseau to come and made sure he saw some of Zen's work earlier on. Thanks to your Monsieur Dupont. Rousseau loved it. It seemed to me that once people saw Zen as a great painter, he would have no reason to be angry any more. He wouldn't need to show it through you. Anyway, you seem okay now. Thank goodness. The TV people loved it all, of course. Do you still want to talk to them about Japanese art, Mr... Zen Horton? No, said Chris with feeling. Tell him to go away. I just want to finish my book. And don't call me Zen. Alice smiled. The room, she felt, was warmer already. And that concludes the story tea. Oh, quite a strange situation in Paris. I look forward to talking to you all about this in class. Thank you for watching this video. Bye for now.